Could today be the day? Starship Flight 8 has been destacked for fixes, with a new launch schedule now set. Will SpaceX resolve the issues in time? Meanwhile, Blue Ghost has released stunning footage of its landing attempt, and top aerospace executives are shaping the next phase of space exploration. Let's dive into all of it on today's episode of Great SpaceX. Many of us are still feeling the sting of Starship's scrubbed launch attempt on Monday, but setbacks like this are part of the journey, and SpaceX is wasting no time in making things right. Musk later revealed that the issue was related to pressure instability, likely caused during fuel transfer from the tanks to the engines. Without the necessary pressure, the engines couldn't generate enough thrust for liftoff. Naturally, this meant a full inspection was required, leading to a de-stack of the vehicle. Just hours after the missed opportunity on March 3rd, SpaceX got to work. By the morning of the 4th, the ship transport stand arrived at the launch site signaling preparations for de-stacking. At 8.30 a.m. Central, the ship quick disconnect arm retracted from the vehicle and teams sealed open ports on Ship 34 in preparation. An hour later, S-34 was officially de-stacked from Booster 15. Now, the real work begins. Engineers will examine the venting system, fine-tuning it to maintain stable pressure throughout fueling. Sensors will be inspected or added to monitor pressure levels more effectively. The fuel lines and tanks will also undergo checks to prevent leaks and ensure they maintain optimal pressure. Meanwhile, the turbopump system may require adjustments to improve fuel flow and meet precise pressure demands. But Super Heavy isn't the only focus. There may be additional issues with Ship 34. While no specifics have been confirmed, the problem likely involves the engine system or fuel tanks, both critical to completing the flight's objectives. Given Ship 34's incomplete performance in Flight 7, ensuring its full reliability is a top priority. SpaceX's approach to problem solving has always been rapid and methodical. The D-Stack not only allows for immediate fixes, but also provides an opportunity to recheck the entire system before attempting another flight. The company has always prioritized iterative improvements, and this launch attempt is no different. Despite the challenges, SpaceX seems confident in its ability to fix the issues quickly. Shortly after the D-Stack, the company announced on X, now targeting to launch Starship's eighth flight test as soon as Wednesday, March 5th. The official webpage was also updated to reflect the new launch date. This means SpaceX believes it can resolve the problem between March 4th and the morning of March 5th, just in time for a same-day relaunch attempt. The rapid turnaround suggests that neither B-15 nor S-34 will need to return to the production site for modifications. Instead, all work will be carried out directly at the launch pad, ensuring the entire system is rechecked before liftoff. Once fixes are complete, Ship 34 will be restacked onto B-15, likely in the morning or early afternoon, to allow time for pre-launch preparations like venting and fueling. Of course, everything hinges on how quickly the teams can work through the necessary adjustments. SpaceX's engineers and technicians are pushing around the clock to get everything ready, aiming to meet the new March 5th target. If, for any reason, they can't complete the fixes in time, the launch window extends to the 6th, providing an extra day if needed. While another delay would be disappointing, it's far better than rushing and risking a failure. As the saying goes, scrub is better than rud. A successful launch would not only demonstrate the reliability of Starship, but also set the stage for more frequent flights, bringing the vehicle closer to full reusability. The lessons learned from each attempt are shaping the future of space travel, and every step forward is a step toward revolutionizing access to space. This moment is more than just another test. It's another milestone in an era-defining journey. SpaceX's persistence in pushing the boundaries of aerospace technology is why so many of us are invested in every launch. The vision of a fully reusable space vehicle capable of carrying massive payloads and humans to the moon, Mars, and beyond is within reach. So let's keep the excitement high and continue supporting SpaceX on this incredible journey. If you're ready for Starship Flight 8, type let's try again in the comment section down below and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to stay updated on SpaceX's groundbreaking progress. While the world remains focused on Starship, another exciting mission is capturing attention, the Blue Ghost Lunar Lander. 
Recently, impressive images and videos taken from Blue Ghost's onboard cameras have been sent back, offering a stunning view of the lander's historic touchdown on the moon. The first image revealed Blue Ghost's shadow cast on the brighter lunar surface, confirming that the lander successfully landed and remained stable. This shadowed image quickly drew comparisons to Apollo 11's historic landing in 1969, highlighting the significance of this modern-day lunar mission. In addition to the image, a remarkable video was released showcasing Blue Ghost's landing sequence. The footage captures lunar dust rising as the lander's thrusters fired near the surface, providing an incredible visual of the touchdown process. The landing itself appeared to be slow and controlled, indicating that the Firefly Aerospace team executed their plan with precision and careful preparation. Alongside these visuals, Firefly Aerospace shared their excitement on X, stating, Watch Firefly land on the moon. After identifying surface hazards and selecting a safe landing site, Blue Ghost landed directly over the target in Mare Crisium. A historic moment on March 2nd, we'll never forget. We have moon dust in our boots. Hashtag Blue Ghost Mission 1. Shortly after, another image was released, this time from a top-down perspective taken from one of the lander's compartment cameras. This image provided a clear view of Blue Ghost's landing legs with the lunar surface stretching into the distance. Firefly followed up with an exciting update stating, Blue Ghost has been busy since parking on the moon. Just in the last two days, the data we've downlinked jumped from 27 gigabytes to 257 gigabytes as we continue NASA payload operations. This includes deploying Lunar Planet Vac and sampling Lunar Regolith, deploying the electrodynamic dust shield, and demonstrating dust mitigation, capturing images from scalps, and continuing operations for the other payloads. Get more details on the Blue Ghost Mission 1 payloads here. These are just the early days of Blue Ghost's two-week mission on the lunar surface. Over the next 14 days, the lander will continue sending back high-resolution images, videos, and scientific data for researchers to study. NASA reaffirmed this in their latest update stating, During the 14 days of surface operations, NASA payloads will continue collecting science and data on the moon as part of the agency's Artemis campaign. Continue to follow along for more CLPS updates. The success of Blue Ghost represents a significant step forward in the long-term goal of returning humans to the moon. Each successful lunar lander mission provides crucial insights into the lunar environment refining the technologies that will eventually support human exploration. This mission, alongside others in the Commercial Lunar Payload Services, or CLIPS, initiative, solidifies America's leadership in space exploration, especially in response to China's growing ambitions in space. And this is just the beginning. More landers are scheduled to arrive on the moon in the coming months. Up next is IM-2 Athena which is set to land on March 6th at the moon's south polar region, a key site for future crewed missions and lunar-based development. Additionally, Hokuto R Resilience, the companion lander to Blue Ghost, has been scheduled by iSpace for a landing attempt on June 5th. With missions like Blue Ghost, we are witnessing the resurgence of lunar exploration, one that will pave the way for humanity's long-term presence on the moon. Now for our final piece of news today, let's take a look at the latest statements from top U.S. aerospace executives regarding the future of the space launch industry. Many industry leaders have raised concerns that current U.S. launch facilities may soon be unable to handle the surge in demand. If left unaddressed, this issue could impact the nation's ability to compete in the rapidly expanding commercial space sector, which is becoming increasingly vital to the industry. During the Air and Space Force Association's Warfare Conference in Aurora, Colorado on March 3rd, Dave Limp, CEO of Blue Origin, stated, I don't think that people realize how many rockets are going to be launching five or eight years from now. This concern was shared by executives from SpaceX and ULA who agreed that early preparations are needed for a future in which multiple launches per day become the norm. Despite Blue Origin having completed just one orbital mission earlier this year, with no confirmed timeline for the next, LIMP remains confident that the company will eventually ramp up flight frequency, reuse rockets efficiently, and serve a growing customer base. He also emphasized the rapid advancements in China's space program, reinforcing the urgency of upgrading U.S. launch infrastructure. Another major issue raised at the conference was launch congestion, a challenge highlighted by John Edwards, SpaceX's VP of Falcon Launch Vehicles. 
with an increasing number of private and government launch providers operating simultaneously, efficient scheduling and management will be critical. Edwards proposed the implementation of federal launch ranges, a system designed to track congestion and optimize scheduling when multiple launches occur within a short time frame. However, one of the biggest questions surrounding launch infrastructure expansion is funding. Should the government take the lead or should private companies bear the cost? On this, Tori Bruno, CEO of ULA and SpaceX's John Edwards, both agreed that launch companies should invest in infrastructure but with a fair cost allocation model. In addition to upgrading launch sites, discussions also included modernizing the Space Force's management of launch operations and exploring sea-based or foreign launch sites as alternative solutions. Overall, it is evident that the U.S. space industry is heading toward an era of rapid expansion. With demand set to skyrocket, early investments in infrastructure, improved coordination, and strategic planning will be crucial to ensuring American leadership in space exploration and commercial launch services. Now, we wait to see how these critical preparations unfold. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly in the latest details of SpaceX's progress. Thank you so much for tuning in, and remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will always follow you as long as you keep looking up.